You've mentioned the Year of the Zebra. Uh, what is this initiative all about? Uh, medical students are taught um, when you hear hoofbeaks, think of horses, not zebras. And it's a, it's a really nice pithy adage that is meant to say, teach future clinicians to focus on the more common conditions, not the rare ones. And I think that's great advice in general, except for the fact that if you actually look at the data, uh, there's over 300 million people worldwide who have rare conditions. Zebras are defined, rare disorders are defined as affecting less than 200,000 people in the U.S. Um, or one in less than one in 2,000 in the EU uh, based on those government uh, guidelines. So the year of the zebra that we launched this year in 2023 is uh, celebrating the 40th anniversary of an uh, important policy change in the U.S. called the Orphan Drug Act, which helped us uh, collectively helped incentivize pharmaceutical companies to uh, to invest time and money into making therapies or repurposing drugs for these rare conditions. If you are in medical school, you are studying typically to be a specialist or to be a generalist in kind of general practice. If you want to be someone who knows something about a rare condition, is, is that a track that you can go down to you know, say that I, I want to just study the zebras or do you have to pick one zebra? How does, how does that work? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, I think twofold. One is for the generalist, people who pursue primary care, family medicine, um, uh, and really anyone who goes into medicine, we want them to approach every patient as an individual and with humility. So we've done content, we've created content on, you know, what happens if you have a patient who has a rare condition, say they are diagnosed, how do you, how are you an advocate for them? Because certainly there's too many of them for any everyone to be a specialist in. So what do you do if you come across a patient who has ankylosing spotlightus? How do you get them the best care? So some of that's just be, basically being an advocate, empathy. Um, how do you navigate and use tools like Elsevier's Clinical Key to find the right researchers, Science Direct to find the right researchers? Um, we're, we're really excited. We're announcing that Elsevier is making the first open access rare disease journal called Rare. Uh, and they're announcing that on International Rare Disease Day on February 28th this year. Um, uh, and so, you know, for the generalists, it's how do you become the best advocate for rare disease patients? For the specialists, yeah, they tend to focus on one or a group of conditions. Uh, so, for example, a neurologist may focus on, you know, Rett syndrome um, or KIF-1A uh, and other syndromes like that. But the cool thing about that neurologist who specializes is um, there's several advantages to specialize and be a rare disease researcher or clinician. One is that you have a, a really captive audience of very grateful patients and family members, right? Like you are their lifeline. Um, and there's countless stories of people we've had on the Raise Line podcast who are that lifeline, who because they were the, they chose for whatever reason to specialize in say Castleman disease, they were able to really help uh, the people with Castleman disease um, find cures and discoveries. A second thing is they many of them make a name for themselves because um, a classic example is research on the rare disease familial hypercholesterolemia, which is a rare uh, high, you know, high cholesterol condition inherited in families, uh, led to the development of statins, which hundreds of millions of people take. It's much more common. So there's many examples where research on rare conditions leads to developments that can help more common conditions, at least our understanding of them. Um, and so if you decide to dedicate your career to say epidermolysis bullosa, which is a rare dermatological condition, hopefully it'll be a cure in the next three to five years. That's what we're tracking towards. Um, you can not only help that community, but you can also develop a drug or a treatment that can help many other people who have skin conditions and, and, and truly make an impact. Um, so that's why we're trying to promote it at among our audience of so a couple million current and future healthcare professionals is just to pay attention to zebras and maybe some of them will become uh, the next people who discover therapies and cures and others will just become, you know, great advocates for rare disease patients.